Hey, what's up, guys? I got some buzz going on in my social media world right now about fat loss, carbohydrates, can you eat carbs, can you not eat carbs, all this stuff. And I want to clear up confusion. I hope you guys know that absolutely you can lose weight eating carbs, but there's some caveats to that. So I want to make sure that my people know, okay? And if you haven't read my book, Short Term Keto, if you do have my book and you didn't read the intro, read the freaking intro to that book. It would be very eye-opening because I actually gained body fat and lost muscle on keto over the course of a year. I lost all my weight when you guys seen my before pictures. I don't know what I was body fat percentage, but assuming from what I know now, I was probably pushing 40% body fat. Okay. And I went all the way down to 11% body fat, eating carbohydrates. Okay. I was not keto when I went through that transformation. I did keto after that. So I started keto at 11% body fat. That was the first time I got a DEXA scan was right when I started keto. I was 11% body fat. That's very low for a woman. I did not realize I was that low. Okay. So let's talk about this. And over the course of a year of being strict keto, I lost muscle and gained body fat quite a bit, actually. So um, I want to clarify some things. I know now why that all happened, looking back in retrospect, and so I thought I would share. Because there's some dogma in the keto community that keto is the only way you can lose body fat, and that's bullshit. No, it is not. Look at all of the other people that are outside of the keto community who have changed their body composition completely, not doing keto. Okay. So I just want to clarify, but there's some people that doing keto is definitely going to be a smarter and easier way to change your body composition. And the numero uno, the biggest one out of everybody is if you have high blood sugar, do you know what your blood sugar is? It is like, what? Like, I don't know. It cannot be that expensive to go get a blood sugar meter at like Target or something. I have one that's like, it's like a hundred bucks, but it has like a huge pack and it's the keto mojo and it measures ketones, all that stuff. But listen, if your blood sugar, you woke up this morning, you rolled out of bed and you tested your blood sugar and it's over a hundred, you should definitely do keto. I was not in that boat. Okay. I was not ever, I didn't ever, I, I, I know now from all the biofeedback I can look at, I never had blood sugar dysregulation. I was very active. I, even when I was higher body fat, I was running marathons pretty fast too, right? Seven something pace over the course of a marathon. All right. So I did not have dis blood sugar dysregulation when I lost weight. Also, I was training like a mofo beast. When I lost my weight, I was training hard every single day. At that time, I was still running some too. So I was doing a lot of glycolytic activities. Do you guys know what this means? It means when your heart rate is going higher in any sort of exercise and you're maintaining this high heartbeat, you are running off glycogen. So eating carbohydrates to support that kind of athletic performance for somebody who does not have high blood sugar, they're doing a ton of intense resistance training and then possibly doing some high intensity aerobic stuff too. Those people and no blood sugar problems. Those people are probably going to lose weight easier doing like a high protein, some fat, some carbs approach, which is what's in my level up program. If you're doing my self guided thing, right? I also have those options in my, in my, uh, app because I know damn well that not everybody is going to be a high responder to keto. Now let's take the other end of the spectrum here. You've got a lot of body fat. You're obese, right? And guess what? Some of y'all are obese and you probably don't even realize it because you don't re really even look, you don't look like an obese person, but <laughs> you got 40 something percent body fat, you're obese. So if you are that obese, if your body fat percentage is that high, you probably have high blood sugar too. So those people obese and high blood sugar, keto is going to be an easier way for you to lose body fat because when you bring your blood sugar down, your body can finally start accessing its fat stores. Does that make sense? Okay. So perfect blood sugar is like, you know, we got to like estimate here, but around 85. So you wake up in the morning, your blood sugar is around 85. I, 
honestly, I don't really think you need to do keto unless you've got like epilepsy or like a super high inflammation or autoimmune stuff going on that you're trying to heal, something like that. For fat, for, for changing your body composition, you've got perfect blood, perfectly regulated blood sugar. You, even if you wanted to get real geeky and test after you eat carbohydrates and watch, you can Google this, like to see what a normal blood sugar rise and fall is. Okay. Maybe it goes up to 120, 130. A few hours later, you're back at 85. I don't really think you need to do keto unless you want that cool metabolic adaptation of training your body what to do in the absence of food, which that's a really, really good reason for pretty much anybody to do keto. And that is the main reason that I am glad that I did keto because my body is so much more able to, to respond to actual hunger and not blood sugar lows, right? A lot of people get cravings for food and stuff because their body freaks the F out when blood sugar goes low and they don't know what to do, their body's like, shoot, you better eat food, eat carbs, eat sugar now and get this back up. But once you've been adapted to keto, your body's like, oh, that's all good. I'll just, I'll just, you know, go into ketosis here. And that is a cool thing to do for your metabolism. So that is the only reason if you got good blood sugar, you're going to be doing like pretty intense workouts and stuff like that. That is like the only reason I would do keto unless you have something you're trying to heal with it. Okay. So listen, carbohydrates. Here's the other facet. I really want you guys to understand <laughs> if you're going to be eating carbs and you're trying to lose body fat, you've got to be doing something glycolytic to be using those carbs. I have used this analogy over and over and I will keep using it because I feel like there's a lack of understanding of how our freaking body works on this very basic level. And it's this. You, your muscles and your liver are these carb storage tanks, okay? And if you fill them up by eating carbs and then you sit on your ass all day, every day, it is going to take forever to empty out those storage tanks. And then you eat carbs again and your muscles and liver are already full of glycogen and there's no room for any more. Yes, you are going to store the excess carbohydrates as body fat. So if you want to eat carbs and not get fat from them, you have to be active. You have to empty your storage tanks. So if you're going to be sitting on your butt all day, hell yeah, I would not be eating very many carbs. I would be going keto or extremely low carb because the likelihood of you like using up what's in your storage tanks before you eat more is really low because when you're just sitting on your ass, it's going to take forever to use up those carbs that you stored. And once your liver and muscles are full of glycogen and then you eat more on top of that, your body has to get the, the blood sugar down. And so it has nowhere else to put those carbs that are in your blood, right? This glucose, it has nowhere else to put it except fat storage. Does that make sense? So you absolutely can, you absolutely can lose body fat and gain muscle eating carbs. Plenty of people do it. Look at bodybuilders. Look how lean they get. They're eating carbs. Why does this work? Because they're training like mofo beasts. <laughs> okay. So Charles Poliquin, who I got my, one of my um, certifications from, used to say that most people only deserve one lick of a dried prune <laughs> in terms of carbs because they're not active enough. <laughs> okay. So if you're going to eat carbs, you need to be, have a reason to eat them. And if you're trying to not be fat basically. Okay. And the other thing is you got to be smart about which carbs you're eating. <laughs> if you're just eating like donuts all day, I'm not saying you can't ever have a donut, but they got no fiber. They've got no nutrients and you're going to overeat on them. They're usually paired with fat because not that many people like just plain carbs right? Like that's not that great. So they're usually, it's a huge energy surplus, right? So what I would recommend is like when I lost that weight, I was not eating donuts and shit. I mean, maybe every once in a while I was eating sweet potatoes. Yes. Fruit, the ultra demonized fruit. I was totally eating fruit. Um, you know, potatoes, rice, those kind of things, real food that fills you up. And then the reason that can be very beneficial if you're training like a beast in the gym is it enhances your athletic performance when you're working in those glycolytic ranges. Okay. When you're crushing it 
and your heart rate is going high, carbs will absolutely enhance your athletic performance. So if you're in that like approach where you're in the gym all the time, you're crushing it, you're lifting weights, you're hitting high intensity levels, and you don't have high blood sugar, I actually think eating carbs will be way more conducive to success for you than keto. Because if you try to do that level of workout intensity when you're keto, it's going to be real hard. You just don't, you're not able to make ATP quick enough without enough stored glycogen. Now there's some caveats to this and stuff for people who've been keto adapted a long time. It could be glycogen sparing and all that stuff. And I'm not going to get into that. I'm talking to somebody who's like just starting on this journey and they're trying to get in shape. So, but if you're not going to be crushing it in the gym, I, I mean, I literally can feel like I've gone on some trips where I just wasn't working out. I was like, I don't even want carbs. <laughs> My body, like, I'm very in touch with my body now at this point in my journey. And I can tell when my activity goes down, body's like, I don't need them. <laughs> and when activity's up like crazy, it's like, yep, you need them. <laughs> so just want to share that. Um, does that make sense? Do you guys have questions on that? Um, any problems with eating fruit with a high fat and high protein? Yes, anything. It's, it's not really... I mean, energy toxicity, I think, is an unnecessarily scary phrase. I don't think we need to put it like that. Just think of it this way. If you're eating high fat and high carb, those are the two main energy sources for your body. Protein's not really an energy source. It can be turned into carbs if you have a ton of excess and you don't have enough carbs, but your body doesn't really want to do that. So if you're eating a lot of fat and a lot of carbs, your body is just, it's going to fat is only used in the like temporary, right? Um, let me, how do I explain this? Like if you're eating dietary fat, you're, you're, you don't, you don't have storage tanks for fat except body fat. <laughs> it will, you'll use it for like hormone health and making cell membranes and you know, your brain and some things like that. But whatever's left over, if you're not in ketosis, that's the only reason you would use it as like a main energy source in that moment. It would start getting turned into ketones. But if you're not, cause you just ate carbs with it, your body has nowhere else to put it except fat storage. <laughs> so if you're eating and you're eating carbs too, carbs and fat at the same time, you just, it's just too much energy that your body doesn't need in that moment. And so it's going to store the rest as body fat. Your body fat is saving your life. I don't know if you guys realize that. Uh, Amy Sprouse, who was on my podcast, said it that way. And I freaking love that. She's like, your body fat saved your life over and over and over and over and over because you ate more than you needed at that time. It's a survival mechanism. It's good for us to have body fat <laughs> so we don't die. But if you have tons of extra, yeah, if you eat a lot of too much energy at once, it just has nowhere else to put it. I don't, I don't, uh, there's a lot of like scary buzzwords out there. I don't think we need to like look at it like that. It's if we look at it a little bit more logically with the body, it's just like our body is always trying to help us survive always. So it's like saving the rest for later. If our body think if your body didn't store body fat, <laughs> the likelihood of us dying from a lack of food would be so high, <laughs> you know? So like, Thank God our bodies are designed that way. You see, you get too hungry, you just die. <laughs> you know? All right. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. So basically, in a nutshell, what I'm saying is if you have high blood sugar and a ton of body fat, keto is probably going to be a more optimal, easier way for you to lose weight. If you are not obese and you have totally normal blood sugar and you're crushing it in the gym, carbs are probably going to be a much easier way for you to get success and change your body composition and lose body fat and all that stuff. Okay. For me personally, one of the negative aspects of keto that I experienced, and I think this is why I gained body fat on keto is because I just never freaking felt full at the end of my meals. It was so 
maddening. I, I was like, dude, I haven't felt like this in years now. And I was just like in the freaking pantry, like I need something else. Nut butter. Okay. Uh, nuts. I'm just like eating this huge energy surplus because I just didn't feel satiated. And you know, now looking back at that, I really think it was because insulin can also serve as a satiety help with satiety signals. And I think like, because I had such good blood sugar, I just qualified for boss. I just, I ran the Boston marathon in the middle of that. I was in killer shape. Okay. I'm crushing it in the gym. I had very, very good blood sugar management before I ever did keto. And I think not getting that insulin at the end of the meal is what caused me to not feel satiated at the end of meals is my punch on that. Cause as soon as I started just eating some strawberries or whatever at the end of my meal, I was like, I'm good. And I felt back to normal. So just sharing. That's all in the intro of my book. I go really into detail with all my DEXA scans and what that whole process was like. Okay. And I just, I share this because I love keto, dude. I have clients on keto when it's appropriate for them. It's awesome. I've got a type two diabetic client right now. How effing yes, I have him on the keto, you know, <laughs> when I get very obese clients, I'm definitely going to put them on keto unless they've had a ton of like binging restrictive mindset around food. Like sometimes we got to heal that shit first. They're not ready to go with that kind of restrictive diet. But if your blood sugar is a whack and it's going high and low from carbs and you get in those lows, you're going to feel like you just don't have any self control, but it's a biological thing that's going on where your body thinks it's dying. <laughs> so that's why so many people who are pre-diabetic and most of them don't even know it. You know, they estimate that 88% of the pre-diabetic people in the United States don't know they're pre-diabetic. It's bad, dude. I've had people where I'm like, dude, they're borderline diabetic. Like I might need to send them to the doctor, right? They had no idea, dude. And they think that they just have bad willpower. <laughs> so anyway, all right, I'm going to go. Just wanted to share that with you guys. Carbs can play a role in a fat loss journey for the right person. Keto can play a, a role in the fat loss journey for a right person. So sorry to not give you some super dogmatic. This is the one right way for all humans. But in my opinion, that is the most, <laughs> how do I say it's low level thinking. I don't know how else to say it. It's not, <laughs> it, it sells, it sells really well on, on the internet, but it's not true or doing a service to people because then when they try it and it doesn't work well for them, they're like, what's wrong with me? And I don't like that shit. So <laughs> just trying to give you guys a little bit more info on that. Okay. Have a great day guys. Bye.